Aloha, it's Jill, the Barefoot Grandma, and this is my third video in my cancer series. Today we're going to talk about hair loss. Hair loss is something that every woman dreads, and we know it's coming. We've been told by our oncologists if that's a part of the side effects, <coughs> excuse me, of our treatment. Um, it's highly anticipated in a not so good way. Uh, and we all deal with it differently. There's different ways of dealing with hair loss, different things to make us feel better. Some women choose to wear hats and scarves. Uh, some women choose to just go bald and let their beautiful head shine. Some people do get tattoos on their head to make a statement or be a little bit of a rebel. Um, some women um, uh, tend to wear wigs. Um, there's certainly a wide variety of wigs to choose from and they're much more comfortable now than they used to be. They used to be quite scratchy and, and hard, on, uh, hard to bear on our sensitive heads. Um, or you may go with a combination of all of the above. For me, um, well I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me start with uh, leading up to, to going bald. Um, I kind of in some weird way was hoping I'd go bald sooner rather than later. And so right after my first chemo, um, I started this process of tugging. And I, I can only imagine that a lot of women do this. I've never really talked to anybody about it, but I just think uh, it's natural. It's you know it's coming. You're not quite sure how it's going to happen. Are you going to wake up and it's all gone? Um, I know some people have woken up and there's lots of hair on their pillow. Um, but for me, I just it was almost got to be a nervous tick. Uh, if I think about it, I'd tug to test and see if my hair was coming out. So my first chemo, tug tug tug, nothing. Uh, second chemo, tug tug tug, tug 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 nothing. Uh, and then one day I was uh, driving down the highway, had my window down, and tug, 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 and out came a chunk of hair. And um, it, it didn't freak me out. Uh, and it was kind of an odd feeling. It wasn't, uh, it was kind of like a, a, a weird release. It didn't, um, it didn't hurt by any means. But just kind of like what what is that old adage uh, with Lay's potato chips? You can you can't only eat just one. So first tug, then of course I had to go back up for a second tug, more chunk of hair, and so it ended up that I'm driving down the road with my window done, and I'm just tugging away, taking chunks out of my hair and throwing it out the window, watching it flutter back, and I, God only knows what the car behind me was thinking. Um, and I, it was about five minutes before I hit my little town that I was going to, and I just kept tugging. And pretty soon I had these bald spots, um, and, I, and I never freaked out about it. Uh, and I just drove directly to a barber. That wasn't planned, I just, it seemed to make sense. I drove, and I don't know why I chose a men's barber over a beauty salon, but, um, well, I guess, I guess that made sense to me too, because I was gonna go in for a buzz cut, so. Uh, went in and and the man was a little bit taken aback. He hadn't had that request before, but we talked a little bit and he could see what was going on. And I sat down and off my hair came what was left of it. And I didn't tell my husband uh, that that's what I had done. So it was um, quite a shock when he got home and I didn't have any more hair. I, I mean, technically there was fuzz from the places that weren't yet totally bald or from the places that I hadn't pulled my hair out. So there was still, and that was before my hair went gray, um, still dark hair, uh, you know, like a super, super close buzz cut, like military. Um, but it was, it was all, uh, it, was, it was okay. I didn't really mind being bald. Uh, actually, I kind of enjoyed it in a way, and I didn't mind the look of my bald head. Um, actually, I have a picture here I was gonna show you. That's me with my sunglasses um, and a friend of my daughter's at the time. 
but uh, it wasn't too bad. Um, it actually was really freeing. Uh, oh, sorry, that's that's my old lady there, Chloe. Shh. Um, yeah, I adapted to being bald pretty well. I um, there actually uh, were benefits uh, to being bald. It uh, I chose not to wear a wig. I think I might have tried one on, but I didn't like it. Uh, hats have always made me super claustrophobic. Um, scarves aren't my jam. Uh, so I just liked the freedom of being bald and wasn't quite going to go the tattoo route. Um, but the benefits of being bald actually were pretty significant because it almost tells people around you that you do have cancer. And I had some interactions with strangers that I wouldn't give up for anything in the world. And I would not have had those had I covered my head in some way. Uh, and I'm not uh, trying to imply that the way that I chose to deal with uh, hair loss and baldness was the right way. It just was the right way for me. Um, in Walmart one time, I had a woman come up from behind me and hug me uh, from behind. Uh, crying and she said um, you're so beautiful and I I wish I could do what you're doing you know I tried to wear a wig and it, it gave me an allergy and and now I have all of these sores on my head and and then we just got to talking because obviously we both shared the same journey and um, it was just a, a delightful moment um, and then also in Safeway I was, uh, the young man was helping me out to the car with my groceries and he had put, put my groceries in the car and then he just stood there really quiet and kind of kept looking at his feet and um, I was waiting. I, I kind of knew where we were going in this conversation, but I needed to give him time to, to take us there. And he asked me, um, do, you have, do I have cancer? And I said, yeah. Um, I said, but I'm, I'm doing fine. And said, why do you ask? And he got really, really quiet and he said, my dad just died of cancer. And so I had the opportunity to give this kid a hug and, and um, stand out in the Safeway parking lot and just connect with another human being on a very intimate level that, once again, I wouldn't have had if I'd covered my head up. And so um, for me, those benefits far outweighed any... Uh, anything I had to deal with, you know, the shocked looks of people and whatnot. And, and I guess I was, <laughs> truthfully, I was probably still young enough at 39 that, um, and always having been a little bit of a rebel, I kind of like that probably a little bit. Um, but I will tell you that uh, I kind of went back in preparation for this video to, to read about hair loss from um, the chemo that I had at the time, which was adriamycin and cytoxin. And, and they talk about generally people lose their hair and, and some people might lose hair on other places on their body. Well, I seem to do everything in, in great extreme. And so I lost every hair, every pubic hair, every hair under my arms, on my legs, hair on my nose, no eyelashes, no eyebrows. I was as bald as a billiard ball, truthfully, on every level. And the funny thing about all of this is um, I, I kind of got it. You know, God created us in a certain way in all parts of our body to work with each other and they all have a reason. Well, the hair in your nose has a reason too. Um, I didn't realize how much your nose dripped and ran when you didn't have any more hair in your nose. So it gives you a, a greater sense of appreciation for the small things in life, I guess I would say. Um, you know, all of that was 19 years ago. I don't know if I'd go bald now, if I had a relapse or a different cancer. I don't know if I would be as fierce in myself, uh, in my walk that I was then. I kind of think I would be, but you know, I'm older, you know, I'm getting wrinkles like all of us do. And you know, my skin's going south a little bit. So. You know, I might not have the same confidence, but whatever, it, it, God forbid that happens. But if it ever did, you know, I, I guess my message to this fairly short video is 
do you in all things, in all steps of this journey, um, do you. Do you the best way, the most comfortable way, the most safe way that makes you feel the best because that's the right way. Anything else, not being true to yourself, following other people's advice, doing what your husband wants you to do, or your, you know, not necessarily your doctors, but you know, feeling pressured to do something, feeling funny because you don't have hair, um, you know, whatever it is, let that go. Uh, there's, you can go back to that afterwards if you want to, and hopefully you won't want to, but um, this is a time to do you and screw everybody else, truthfully. Um, so if you want to wear hats, then go buy a bunch of hats, make them wild, make them elegant, make them simple, do you. If you want to do scarves, go buy a bunch of fun ones and do you. If you want to get a tattoo, that's ultimately doing you because you're going to have that the rest of your life. So, um, you know, embrace it. I believe you're going to make this. So look at this as an opportunity in your life to do things that you never would have signed up for, but embrace it, have a little fun with it. I encourage you to laugh. Laughter, truthfully, is the best medicine. And this is completely off topic, but I had a friend that moved from the area that I lived in and moved to Austin, Texas, and she was kind of a um, sarcastic gal like myself, and we both like sarcastic humor. So. You know, we weren't entirely close, but her contribution to supporting me is every day or several, time, uh, several times a week, she'd send me some ridiculously sarcastic joke or, and it made me laugh. I looked, I craved to be able to laugh. It doesn't mean I didn't cry. I had my share of those dark moments, but how, how we do it, how we do cancer, I think has a lot to do with our with the end result because um, being positive not always it, it's impossible to be positive always but to be true to ourselves and to be silly and to dance in the rain because it feels different when you don't have any air you know do those things that just you're never gonna have the opportunity to do again shock people you know take the opportunity to be fierce that's my message today so whether you have a friend, going back to, if you have a friend, support them in doing them. If it's you, can't say this enough, and it's kind of a weird thing that people say these days, do you, and I can't, it, it's no more, or it's not better fitting than this circumstance. Um, have fun, you can, it's okay to have fun even if you have cancer. And, and it's great role modeling for your family and your kids, you know, it's, it, 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 the sadness and the tears and the moroseness that automatically come with this diagnosis is going to happen. Your family's going to have to deal with it. But I think our gift to them uh, is to, to still be able to laugh and to let them know that things are okay. So um, that's it today. I think it looks like eight minutes and 50 some odd seconds. So that's a record for me. Um, not sure what the next topic will be. Please like these videos. It's really important. Um, I want to make more of these even after I'm done with cancer. I have other topics that I want to do. So liking, sharing, watching till the end, and those are all really um, important and, and uh, uh, ways that you can support my videos. And I would be so grateful. Uh, and how I end all of my videos is please talk to me. You know, sh tell me your story ask questions, um, any of that. So once again, from my home on Kauai, you see my bougainvillea in the back, I decided to come out here and sit because I just, my mom gave me this a long time ago before she died and I've dug it up twice now and moved it with me. So it, uh, and you can kind of see that's my outdoor shower, which I absolutely love. So I uh, thought I'd come out here and do today's video. So aloha, much love to you and your family. Take care.